Hey guys, I'm Greg Voros here at Groom Guitars um, with none other than Tom Buchback, the session, session man. man. Session That's man. right. That's right. Session um, man. Tom stopped by to talk some shop and check out some guitars. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the amps uh, as well. So thanks for coming by, Tom. Dude, glad to be here, man. Awesome. Thanks for having me. All right. First things first. Yeah. What got you playing the guitar? Who was your greatest inspiration? Oh man, Beatles, 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 Beatles. That's all I. I didn't even know there was in the music until I was about. 12. My sister, who's about 12 years older than me, she was a massive Beatles freak. And uh, man, I was just spoon fed Beatles my whole life. I mean, I would run home from school. We had one of those console stereos, big giant furniture ones, and we had Abbey Road on vinyl. Run home from school just to listen to me and Mr. Mustard. And, awesome. Uh, oh man, I love that record. I still love them. And I, and I got two kids now, and I'm just Forcing the Beatles on them the way my sister did. That's today. awesome, and they love it too. That's awesome. Great. First, yeah. first guitar. Oh, uh, first guitar was a was a was, um, it was an off-brand Ovation acoustic and applause. Wow, with the, with the bowl back oh, yeah. and, and the aluminum neck. That's right. And uh, man, I wore that thing out. Man. That was, that was first, guitar. first electric guitar. First electric was a Japanese-made Crestline SG copy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't afford guitars like this back in those days. Right. I still can't. I still can actually. Yeah. So this is a this is a '57 gold top. Yeah, we're gold. we're really slumming it here with this. Yeah. With this one. Um, you know, PAFs. It's uh, it's yeah. one of the first for PAFs. It's an awesome guitar. What, what do you what do you look for? What do you look for when you're buying a guitar? First thing I look at is the price tag. Right. <laughs> right. No. Um, I just, man, I just, you know, acoustically, a guitar has to do something when you play it, right? People think, why, why are you so worried about what an electric guitar sounds like unplugged? And, I, and even, I, I must admit, I didn't get that for a long time. You know, I always hear older guys talking about that. Man, what's it sound like unplugged? I was like, who cares? It's an electric guitar. Right? But, but man, when you get a little older and you, when you try all these different instruments, you, you do realize that there is, like, it's totally something to the acoustic resonance of an instrument because I mean how many guitars have I bought from you guys that I've never even plugged in? Very true. Quite a few. I mean like I mean Quite a few. Yeah. Quite and like because you know it's gonna sound good right. when you when you've got such a great acoustic bass, right? Right. This one sounds good. Chime got some some bong, yeah. So yeah, I mean what do you got here? What are these called again? The pickups. Fifty-seven PS. Fifty-seven PS. Yeah, yeah. Man. So when you're, when you're when you're when you're when you're at home and you have a great arsenal of guitars at this yeah. point, quite a few. Yeah. And you're, you're showing up to a session yeah. to do a recording. How many guitars do you go? With? How many guitars do you take with? Oh, um, I have a, a big giant coffin in my cartage that gets delivered to the studio. It's got about twelve guitars in it. You know, but you have when you're a session guy, you have to have everything. You have to have Acoustic, you know, baritone, twelve string, you know, humbuckers, strats, you know, because because you, you, those are like the basic food groups of all guitars. Sure. You have to if somebody requests that they want a twelve string, you don't have one. You know, you're not really a session man. Oh, I, all right, right. you got to have one. You, you gotta, See, for a long time, I thought that all that would have been provided by Mister no, main, main Instruments, and if something came out that they wanted to use, like yeah. a twelve string, that the studio was yeah. Well, that that there are a few studios around here that. Actually, do have a bunch of cool instruments you can play, but if you count on that, you'll be screwed. Yeah. Because yeah, because you know, as soon as you don't bring one, you'll somebody will want it and you don't have it with you, right? But nowadays they're doing, you know, there's a lot of budget constraints, and, and a lot of times people the studio sessions don't want to pay for cartridge, so you have to drag your own gear from home, which is always makes for a longer day for us. But then you got then you got a, a much more limited, you know, bunch of stuff to use, and it's like. I can only bring a couple of guitars and like you know, right. one or two amps and the pedal board, really, you know. And if they want some crazy stuff, I just don't have it because, because you know, it's their fault because they didn't want to sure. pay for the garbage, right? Sure, yeah, sure. So there's that. What's uh, let me ask you, man, what's what's more important to you as a player, especially in, in, a, in, a, in a studio you're, you're recording? Is it the sound or the playability? Because in a perfect world, you would have both, you have a great feeling, great yeah, playing right, instrument right, that right. sounds fantastic, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, I just think of like. I really, I think of guitars as like, 
like I don't like to have any redundancies in guitars. Like if I find a good example of a particular model of guitar that does what it's supposed to do, like beautifully, I don't want to have like three of those. I just want to have one, maybe two for a backup. Like if for, but but like and then I try to get guitars to have their own personality because you don't want a bunch of guitars that all sound the same. You know I don't. I mean like every guitar has got its own. I you know like a telly, a good telly sounds like a good telly, you know, like a Rickenbacker or a Gretsch or something. Those are like sounds that we all know and love. You know, you've got to have a good example of all of those, and and then you know you can use those as like your color. You know, that's I would rather change guitars to get a different sound than than change amps. Right. You know, well, sometimes I'll just plug into an amp and play through that amp all day long in a session, that same amp, but I'll just be changing guitars because that's where the, the real tone. It's not so much the, I mean, the amps can, can affect things, sure. of course, but the guitar, I like to use the guitars as the yeah, color. Because I've heard both. I've yeah, heard yeah, both. I've yeah. heard some cats yeah. talk about yeah. how it's all yeah. about the amp, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's, it's like the pedals in the guitar. You, know, you get a lot of cool cool things going on with a good sound amp. You know? Yeah. That's, that's what I do. Yeah. That's very cool. That do. Very cool. All right, let's hear this song. You want to hear it? Yeah. All right, so here's the, here's the bridge pickup. Tuning's always inspire you to do crazy things because you just put your fingers where you normally put them and it comes up with 
isolated from sound. That's right. That's I, right. I think uh, I always hear a lot of songwriter people always experiment with open tunes because it people inspired when they come up with stuff that don't sure. come up with. It works for me too. Sure. Sure. Um, there's some really cool ones. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we, we've talked over the years. We've known each other a long time. Yeah, yeah. A lot of repair work for you. Yes. And um, one of the things that uh, that is best for that, that is great, a great feeling for a repair person is you spend so much time with an instrument, whether yeah. it be fretwork or yeah. whatever it might be, and then you know you spend five, ten, fifteen hours with an instrument. You become mm -hmm. intimate with the guitar because you're working on it yes. for, for so long. But the, the payoff from you me, do because you're the best uh, repair man <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but but, but what, what, the, the, the payoff for me. Yeah. Is when is when you guys come pick it up or I drop it off and then I let you guys hang with the instrument and just play it, you know. And and one of the greatest compliments I think a repair person can receive is that uh, you know it brings certain things out of me in the way that I play. You with me? Oh, dude. When you get done with one of my guitars, I could do things uh, that that they could never do before because you make them play amazing, man. The fret jobs you do are incredible. Did you do this one? No, this was actually done in shop in, in house here at Groon's a number of years back. Great. Yeah, it, it's beautiful. I mean, the guys upstairs are fantastic. Yeah. What else you got over there? It's <laughs> three thirty-five. Yeah, from sixty-four. Let's try that one. Let's. You want to? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's see what we got. Sixty-five. Four. Four. All right. Let's see what this does.